Welcome back to my channel. I'm Shawan Burns. Please click that like button and that subscribe button. We have our first interviewee ever, Miss Rochelle Irison. She is my hairstylist. She owns Plug Salon and Spa. She is a licensed cosmetologist, which is located in Warren, Michigan. She has been in the business for eight and a half years and always been doing hair since 2009. She's married to Tank Jones, has a beautiful daughter, Zoe Lou, and your burning desire is to have no worries. I think everybody, <laughs> that's everybody burning desire, <laughs> right? No worries and more money, right? <laughs> that's everybody's goal. <laughs> right. And your key to success is be passionate about your skills. It makes it easier to love. This week we're doing a whole transformation week on businesses and I've been following you on Facebook. I'm really inspired about what you're doing and how you've been transforming your business, offering new products and services. So can you tell everyone uh, what, what you've been doing lately? Um, lately, since the salon has to be closed here in Michigan, um, my idea was to try to pivot from behind the chair and try to keep in touch with all my clients um, and make sure that their hair is still on their head. Um, so I'm offering licensed products to clients, um, at-home root touch-up kits to clients um, with professional instructions, professional equipment, tools, and such. No bleach, not at all. Okay. Um, no permanent, so it is a semi-permanent that I am offering. Um, and virtual consultations, um, walking people through wet sets and whatever else, blow dries, whatever else, um, so that I can get them the right proper products that they need. Okay. What kind of spark, like, oh, let me start selling stuff online. Were you just trying to, like, be creative and make some money? Or you just was like, oh, okay, I see where the industry is going. Um, one day I was like, I was on Facebook and I'm like, Ooh, I can get you your products delivered. Okay. And somebody asked me, asked me like, Oh, can you give me some shampoo? And I'm like, yeah, I can get that. Okay. And it started spiraling out of control. I made pedicure kits, like 30 of them in one week. And so I'm like, look, I need a website. I need to add this to my website. And since plug salon and spa was already for booking, um, mm -hmm. I made it where they can buy the products there too. Uh, yeah, that I mean, I think that move was really smart. So let's backtrack. Uh, tell uh, tell the audience about like your childhood, your upbringing. Um, well, I'm the oldest of four children. Um, my mom and dad. I am the oldest. I have a brother that is one year younger than me. And our entire life, everybody said we was twins. Um, I have two younger siblings. I am 15 years older and 19 years older than both of them, and they are both girls. Mm -hmm. uh, I grew up on the east side of Detroit, seven mile a mile. Um, a lot of people do not know that. Um, but then about 15, my mama moved me in Macomb. Um, and I've been out here ever since. Uh, I've been a mom since I've been born, if you ask me. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, having that age gap between your siblings, I'm pretty sure they look at you as a, a, a mom, right? Especially because we lost my mom in 2016. So my sisters were seven and like, 10 almost 11 so um it was a lot so yeah so yeah, you've been responsible for a long time then you had to that mama role so i could see you going into business at a young age i it, had to i had to figure out how to be able to help financially at a young age and um my biggest fear was always never being able to hold my own um, my mom was a housewife she did not go and work she mm -hmm. was just wanted to be and that's what she wanted to be my mm -hmm. daddy was uh, the breadwinner so growing up I'm like no not me I'm gonna go out here I'm gonna make my own money I'm gonna figure it out so that hustler mentality started real young eight years ago so what sparked hey I want to go into the hair industry what, what what sparked that such a crazy story my friend Lador um I was a student at Wayne State I was 18 and uh, my friend Lador was like, I want to get my nail license. I love doing nails. <laughs> okay, so I went with her to register for school. And I told her to take cosmetology, and she wouldn't. She didn't even finish her nail classes. I finished cosmetology. And um, I messed around and got a bachelor's degree and don't even use it. Wow. So I 
ended up falling in love with the, com the communication, the connections, um, just making your own money at your own time, being your own boss. I loved all of that. Uh, you said you got a bachelor's degree in what? Criminal justice. <laughs> So you all educated and you do it. Well, sometimes I use it for contract. Like contract, okay, yeah. try yeah. to fix it out. But I ain't using it for real. Yeah, yeah, I hear you. Uh, that's something like me. I got an engineering degree in installing blinds. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's all that matters. Right. <laughs> Little detours, you know, to get where we need to go. Yeah, where we need to go. Yeah, you're absolutely right. I know you have Maya as an employee, uh, employee, but how many other employees do you have? I have five total. Um, my, my two distributors are on my payroll. I have a cleaning service that comes in. That's on my payroll. Um, and two assistants. So over the years, how has your industry changed? When I first started in 2009, um, it was still popular for cutting your hair off and getting that Fantasia look. And everybody wanted that frying and, and still getting heavy relaxers. Um, and now I almost never use a relaxer ever. Um, and most people want to wear weave. Um, I'm not, I do extensions, but I'm not like a wig stylist or a lace front expert. I don't do that. However, the industry definitely wants that. Okay. Um, so over the last eight years, that's changed. And price-wise, prices have definitely increased. Okay. Now, um, you said you don't install lace front. Do you like opposed to that or you just don't, that's not like your area of expertise? Kind of both. Okay. Um, I feel like if I give you a reason to be lazy, you will be. Okay. And then your hair will become... Um, a product of it is of its own environment so if you're becoming lazy and it's underneath and it's no air getting to your scalp um your hair follicles are just rubbing up against lace and it's gonna fall out and this the professional part of me won't let me do it and then also they look so believable i can't even believe it myself so yeah it does behind that like glue, uh -huh. the glue is horrible for your hair i don't care what stylist is telling you it's amazing it's a lie Mm -hmm. You have to dehydrate your scalp to put that on. Mm -hmm. You have to put alcohol on the skin to apply it. Mm -hmm. So you're drying out your skin, your hair follicles, everything around it. You're not allowing any oxygen in. So if you don't allow oxygen in your body, what happens? You mm -hmm. think that'll happen to your hair? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, thank and, you. Yeah, yeah. And you know what? And that that attests to like you're completely, and that's why I love coming to you because you are. Um, on healthy hair you know not just putting stuff on your head and you'll tell like i i've, I've been trying to get you to dye my hair you <laughs> because i know <laughs> you probably think like no you don't want to dye your hair <laughs> the only way shiny get her hair color is if she be like <laughs> right, right. products at home uh -huh. i'm gonna wrap my hair uh -huh. so like depend on like the colors or what you're trying to do so like baby steps for some people. Other people, I just, nope, can't get that. Not yeah, that. yeah, yeah, you're completely on hair, uh, healthy hair and hair care. So that's one of the reasons why I love coming to you. Um, so what? tell the people, what kind of services did you offer before all this stuff happened? Um, I was offering wet sets, twist outs, um, thermal styling, anything to do with natural hair. Um, even if you got a relaxer, I did it, short hair, long hair, updos, weaves, all phases of hair care, um, all hair color, balayage, highlights, roots, whatever was needed. Mm -hmm. um, I did all of that. Mm -hmm. And so now, what kind of services, since COVID-19 happened, what kind of services are you offering? Are you taking some stuff off or what, what are we doing? Yeah, I'm, um, I'm hearing that other states aren't allowing their stylists to blow dry. Okay. Um, for whatever reason, they think that it's holding bacteria or spreading it. I'm not sure. Um, mm -hmm. I'm going to do away with the old school hooded dryers. Um, so if or when you get a wet set or a twist out or something of that sort, you will need to bring your own curlers in, your flex rods, whatever you want me to use, um, and you will leave with them in your hair. Or you can sit and let them air dry. Um, so I'm going to do away with hooded dryers. So that goes for um, short hair molding. Um, I feel like you can get a really cute style without having to mold a client. Okay. Um, but that's 
Um, I don't have a lot of short hair clients, um, so I'm going to do away with the hooded dryer for now. Okay. Okay. Now, as far as, or is the state kind of giving you kind of guidance on what you should be offering or, oh, you can't offer this anymore? Are they... No. No updates from Laura. Still nothing. Um, we haven't heard anything from them since March 23rd. Okay. Now, the people that's in your industry, for those people that are not keeping up with their industry and keeping either their workers safe or their customers safe, how do you think it's going to affect them post-COVID-19? I definitely think that if they are being um, proactive right now, that they'll be okay. Um, the ones that aren't, um, they're not, not thinking about time management. Um, I think that those kind of stylists will be the ones to suffer. The ones that expect for their lobby to be packed and everyone's gonna wait on them, they're gonna suffer bad. Um, they're not looking for that. People are um, becoming very valuable of their time right now. They understand like, oh my God, look how much I can get done in one day because they have nothing else to do. So when we come back post COVID-19, um, I really think that people are going to want to go out and do those things still. Um, so if they're sitting in the salon all day, they can't do that. Right. Um, so the stylists that are not booking accordingly um, will suffer. The ones that do not have constant com um, communication with their clients during COVID-19, post COVID-19, they will suffer from that too. Um, and a lot of them aren't going to be able to grow the hair back after this because there's stylists that don't even know how to grow hair. They just glue on a wig on you. Right. So when you you had that wig on for two and a half months because we on lockdown, what is the hair underneath going to do? The stylists don't know what to do with that. So they're going to suffer. I could just imagine spending in a lobby. I, I remember before I came to you, I was at this one guy and he had us waiting there two to three hours. And I'm like, oh, dude, I mean, my time is valuable. Mm -hmm. And then I was going all the way. See, we live over here. I was going all the way to Allen Park. See? So it was don't listen. They don't think about, they feel like they're in need. You're in need of them. But in real life, we need our clients. Exactly. If our clients are not coming, we're not making any money. You're not making so any money. So you give your clients that experience, that 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 feeling of importance mm -hmm. let them make them feel that they are important as well mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You, guys are, you need each other mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and the stylists that don't want to believe that they the ones gonna suffer yeah. in the long run yeah and that gives uh leads me to my next question um have have you experienced where you of course you want to retain clients but have you experienced that you okay i can't deal with this uh client um, I'm going to have to cancel you. <laughs> yeah, um, this was posted. This has nothing to do with COVID. It has nothing to do with COVID. I attract all kinds of people. And <laughs> I have a problem with clients that want to be entitled. I mean, it's okay. I'll spoil you. But some of them want to be spoiled beyond anything I can do. And they're not, not happy. Like, I had a client once come to me get their hair color. Mm -hmm. Tell me what their old stylist did the entire time I'm doing their color. Like, why and are I, you <laughs> like, like, okay, well, that's not how I do it. And it's a like hundred ways to skin a cat. So, you know, let me do my job. Right. I got done and I told her my price. That was an issue. So she didn't pay me the price that I charged. She paid me something different. So I'm like, okay, she's new. I won't push it. She came back to me multiple times. She started coloring hair at home. Her hair started falling out. I had to cancel her. I had to cancel her because every time it was a problem with paying, it was a problem that I wasn't using beauty supply color. It was a problem that she didn't want to follow what I would use on her. So her color was never the way it should have been because she coming in with beauty supply from Lee and Kim. Uh -huh. And I'm using licensed products that are being, that I'm being supplied with. Uh -huh. So it was just too much. She was by far one of the worst. Okay. Yeah. That leads me to a question just, on top of my head, are your products being imported or have you seen a change of importation or do you totally deal with like American made products? So I carry, I'm an affiliate of Amica. Um, that is a Canadian company. Okay. Um, however, I have not experienced any issues with Canada at all. 
So the rest of our products are made in New York. Um, Mazzani is owned by L'Oreal, and that is made in New York. Um, Redken is made in New York. Um, most of them are made locally. Well, not locally in Michigan, but okay. in the U.S. I haven't experienced any problems with my distribution, thank God. Uh -huh. um, that's a good thing. Yeah, that is. I have one company that I absolutely love their shutters that I'd sell to my customers, but it had to, um, it got me rethinking like, hey, I, I'm not going to be able to offer that product anymore because they're way out in China. And then another thing, I, I got this whole mindset since everything happened. I want to support American made stuff, you know, or at least North oh, America, you know. It's because it's, nothing is made here anymore. Yeah. And it's very and hard. Paying for it. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. America is not what China is. China's charging 82 cents to their person for the whole day. They've been in there slaving all day. Baby. And then over here, they made $83. Yeah, exactly. So the product is way more money. Um, but for me, I didn't think about that before COVID. But now that we are in the middle of this, I'm like, thank God. I never even Googled it until then. I'm like, where is this coming from? Exactly. Yeah. And, and that it got me thinking real hard. Okay, I need to like revamp my products and services. Um, I got a, uh, my website is about to be launched my store page. And all this, uh, all the stuff that I offer is all made in the US. It's not that was a whole new client base too. Yeah, exactly. And you know, people, they real, they take pride about Oh, where's your stuff being shipped in from? You know, if it's been shipped in from overseas, it's like, okay, um, you're not really supporting the American yeah. you know, dream or whatever. Some of them take it really serious. Oh, yeah, they do take it really serious. Yeah. Where, where do you see your industry going after COVID-19? Um, I see them limiting um, visitation to the salon. I think that we will have to spread out our clients a lot more. Um, we might even become like a seasonal type of thing because they're worried about it coming back in a second wave and all this other stuff. And that's going to be every year because now that it's here, it's kind of like flu. So what do we do? Um, I do feel like the regulations will be crazy as far as um, – disinfecting time space they might tell us we got to wait an hour before servicing someone else um something like that i think will come to the industry definitely now do you think that's just going to be a temporary thing or uh, is this is a long term i don't think they know okay, okay. i don't think nobody really know yeah they got us on lockdown but they telling us we can group together in tens yeah and you, you can't get your hair done that's yeah that's you can go to the restaurant. You can go to the bar on the 28th. You can go get drunk, mm -hmm. but you can't. Get nope. Yeah, I, I don't understand that. Yeah. That really got me confused because our governor, um, some of my audience is from uh, different states. So we're, we're in Michigan and our governor just extended the uh, stay at home order to the 12th and certain industries like yourself. And who else did she say? Casinos. Casinos. Um, you know, are part of that. Um, I think that like any self care, nails, nail, um, yeah, massage, massage, just stuff like that. Yeah, and they 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 can't um, open. You know, yeah, they can't open up until the twelfth, or unless she decides. So yeah, and I got confused about that, but we could go to the bar and get drunk. You know, that's what I'm saying. On the twenty eighth, everybody can just go out and get drunk. Yeah, but you can't. But her hair done. Oh yeah, you know her. You notice her hair. You. Mm hmm. Yeah. We can't. Exactly. If one piece of advice that you would give anyone that that's a small business owner right now, what what would that piece of advice be? I like say for instance, a lot of the businesses are service businesses, and it's almost impossible for us to be contactless with our clients. Um, like you with the blind company, um, I would suggest like making independent kits, mm -hmm. um, simple, small projects and selling it to them. Um, putting that on your website, DIY, um, for everyone, find a way for you to still matter because you're a profession, you're the professional in your profession. 
um, if you can find a way to exhibit that to them some other kind of way, like me selling the products to you, um, I'm not giving you my technique, but I'm giving you something that will give you some shine and hold you over a little longer to get to me. Mm -hmm. I would suggest that to anybody. Um, try to figure out how to make it happen. Tell everyone where they could find you at. The Facebook page is just Plugs Salon and Spa. That's Plugs with a Z. Um, and Instagram is Rochelle. It's R-O-2 underscore Shell. Um, and the website for everything is linked on both. Um, the website is Plugs Salon and Spa dot com. Um, I am in Warren, Michigan. The address is if you put me on Apple Maps, Google, anything, I will come up. I am certified. Um, and if you need anything, all services, virtual appointments, things like that is all listed online with pricing, booking, everything possible that I have right now is on that website. Okay. And let's show everybody the shirts and stuff that you've been offering. So I, um, on the side, I had a Zoom panel meeting with someone and um, Essential, SF, uh -huh. can't say that on. I have the shirts. So no matter who you are, you are still essential in some sense. And um, I wore the shirt as a statement and it blew up. It just yeah. blew up. Oh, yeah. It was crazy. I have that on the website too in a bunch of colors. I even have one that says, yep, I'm essential. Um, I don't have that with me, of course. But yeah, we just essential as F. So we matter. Yeah. No matter yeah. what, how, you matter. Yep, yeah, you're absolutely right. Small businesses matter. Uh, well, I really appreciate you, Rochelle. Thank you for doing this again. <laughs>